two or three minutes, but not this time. So. All right, our first item of business is to vote to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. All right, thank you board members and uh, thank you staff. I hope everyone had an enjoyable spring break and had a chance to uh, spend some family time and recharge for the remaining 30 days, I guess 29 that we have remaining in the school year. And I know that will be a very, very busy uh, 29. Grace is telling me make sure I don't go ahead and count this one done, correct? Uh, <laughs> A couple of things that have taken place, or quite a few things, have taken place since we last met. Uh, so we'll highlight only a few, but we point to uh, in our community to social media where lots of great things are happening from our school standpoint and being highlighted on a regular basis by our uh, director of communications and others. So, uh, one bit of news is our star student, Michelle Lee from North and Victor Wong from Oconee County High School. Uh, of course, you know they were named SAR students for Oconee County, but they have now been selected as that for our region as well. They'll advance to the state and uh, go forward in April 24th. We'll get to go to the state-level SAR student banquet and be celebrated there in Atlanta. So we look forward and congratulate those two outstanding students. Um, we've got a few more Michelle's and Victor's in the uh, in the arena that are getting ready as we register for kindergarten students and we're up to almost 500 students that have registered for kindergarten uh, with the screenings took place March 27th and 28th and that's an ongoing process uh, as our elementary principals will certainly tell you and we see those numbers rise each and every week. We've had 10 uh, Oconee County students and three alternates that were selected for the Governor's Honors Program at Georgia Southern this summer. Uh, Dr. Stansel tells me that that is up from seven last year to 13 this year. So an already talented student body, but doing even greater things this year as it relates to Governor's Honors. I want to congratulate again our 22 participants that took their time to share with us uh, through the Villa program. Thank the board for attending the, uh, the graduation celebration for those individuals, of course, two from each of our 11 schools, an outstanding program, great feedback, appreciate all the leaders that took part in that, and of course we concluded with a tour of Dove Creek Middle School, uh, showing them the behind the scenes work, and uh, getting to see Fred's fancy hat that he has uh, as he tours people around. So if you haven't seen that, I ask that you uh, get with Fred and check that out, it's worth your time. A couple of other items uh, that I want to share. North Oconee has been chosen by the National STEM Honor Society as one of the top 250 U.S. News and World Report STEM schools in America. So certainly uh, worthy of our praise and congratulate Keith and his staff for their good work there as well. Uh, our students made us proud yet again. They're showing Special Olympics. Those were held at the area meet in Clark Central. And so we want to congratulate those students and Ms. Korngold, our special education director, and all the principals that support those outstanding students. And if you've not attended the Special Olympics, uh, then we'd encourage you to do that because it's just quite, a, uh, quite an endeavor. Uh, Georgia First Lady Marty Kemp and her daughter Jerry also stopped by and read aloud uh, to Dove Creek Elementary first graders uh, since we last met. And so we're always welcoming of dignitaries into our schools to share uh, with our students and give them a treat and so we appreciate uh, First Lady Kemp coming uh, to do that and also bringing Jarrett who was a first grade was a first grade first grade teacher at Dove Creek uh, last year this time. Last week we celebrated National Assistant Principals Week and Prayer Professionals Appreciation Week as well as Open School Library Month and we did that with appreciation that they like the most by giving them the week off. <laughs> so, uh, we, uh, but we did want to take, and we did make note of that in social media, we want to take a minute and thank our wonderful paraprofessionals and our assistant principals and all of our 
uh, staff as we look to conclude a great school year with many, many accomplishments. Uh, Steve has provided pages and pages, and I appreciate that. Uh, but I'm going to conclude on that one uh, unless there are questions from the board. Questions? Thank you. Our next is presentations and discussions. And we'll discussions, and we'll start with teaching and learning. Dr. Susan Sands. Good evening, board members. Dr. Branch, the April 2023 Teaching and Learning Report contains four items of information and three action items. The first item of information is an update on the FY23 Special Education Disproportionality Determination. The Individuals with Disabilities Act, or IDEA, requires the Georgia Department of Education to make determinations annually in the areas of significant disproportionality. These include identification, placement, and discipline of students with disabilities, as well as disproportionate representation and significant discrepancies. The Georgia DOE Special Ed Services and Support recently reformed, informed us that OCS meets all requirements for the FY23 Special Education Disproportionality Determination. The second item of information is the FY23 Georgia Milestones Testing Schedule. The end of grades assessments, given in grades 3 through 8, will begin on April 25th, and our end of course assessments, given in grades 9 through 12, will begin on April 26th. The detailed schedule has also been linked here. The third item of information is our OCS school improvement visits. Our teaching and learning team visited all 11 schools in March for their mid-year visits to get an update on all the great work that is occurring at each of our schools. Several of our visits are pictured here. The fourth item of information is an announcement that both North Oconee and Oconee County High School have received the distinction of being named AP Honor Schools. This is the highest designation that they can receive. In addition, each school was recognized in the following categories. North Oconee has a 2023 AP Humanities School, AP Humanities Achievement School, AP School of Distinction, AP STEM School, AP STEM Achievement School, and OCHS was named a 2023 AP School of Distinction, AP STEM School, and an AP STEM Achievement School. This distinction recognizes their dedication to provide academic opportunities to prepare students for college and career after graduation. Our first action item for the April 17th Board of Education meetings is Foundations. Foundations is a structured literacy approach using multi-sensory techniques. This curriculum is aligned with the science of reading and provides effective instructional practices. We have implemented this in several classrooms, kindergarten through second grade, across our elementary schools. Our schools have seen significant improvements in writing, reading, and spelling in classes where this tool has been utilized. This implementation would complete the program for grades K through 3. It also aligns with the new ELA standards that will be rolled out in FY25. This instructional resource will be available for review at the Teaching and Learning Office and will be paid for using general fund dollars. The superintendent's recommendation is to approve placing this curriculum on the table at the April 17, 2023 Board of Education meeting for public review and comment until the next Board of Education meeting. Our second item, action item for the April 17th Board of Education meeting is ST Math. ST Math is a highly engaging visual instructional program that leverages the brain's innate spatial temporal reasoning ability to solve mathematical problems. This aligns with the new math standards philosophy, promoting strategies to tackle unfamiliar math problems, recognize patterns, and build conceptual understanding. Activities are accessible to all students regardless of skill level or language background because there is no language component. We began using this resource in 2020 for our digital learning students and have continued using this resource as an intervention with wonderful results. Copies of this resource will be available for review at the Teaching and Learning Office. This will also be paid for using general fund dollars. The superintendent's recommendation is to approve placing this curriculum on the table at the April 17, 2023 Board of Education meeting for public review and comment until the next Board of Education meeting. The third and final action item for the April 17th Board of Education meeting is Common Lit 360. Common Lit 360 is a comprehensive ELA curriculum for grades 6 through 8 
that comes with professional learning and wraparound support. Common Lit 360 units are designed around high interest themes and rigorous grade level content so students build both knowledge and mastery of grade level standards. Over the course of the year, students explore multi-genre units, novel studies, research units, and evidence-based argument units. Reading, writing, vocabulary, and discussion are tightly integrated for a seamless experience, and high-quality texts form the backbone of each unit. This instructional resource will also be available for review at the Teaching and Learning Office and will be paid for using general fund dollars. The superintendent's recommendation is to approve placing this curriculum on the table at the April 17, 2023 Board of Education meeting for public and review and comment until the next Board of Education meeting. And that concludes my report, unless there are any questions. Um, I'm familiar with uh, foundations already. Uh, ST Math, maybe I should already be familiar with it, but which schools did we pilot that in? So right now we use that as an intervention. So there's no grade levels that use that across the board. But with the results we've seen, we would like to implement it kindergarten through fifth grade at all okay. schools. And then similar question with Common Lit 360. Have we piloted that yet in our system? We have not piloted that. We okay. have um, previously used um, a resource called Collections. And so we've spent the last year doing um, research on different um, curriculums to um, as our next uh, resource. For so this would six replace the right. for grade 6 through 8. Thank you. Yeah. You answered my question on ST math. Right. Great. Anything else? Thank you. Right. Thank you. Now we have the technology report and Ryan White. Good evening, board members and Dr. Branch. The Oconee County Schools Division of Technology Services April 10th Board of Education report contains two items of information and no action items for the April 17th Board of Education meeting. The first item of information <coughs> is an update on audio enhancement. It is currently installed at Collin Ferry, Malcolm Ridge Elementary, and Rocky Branch Elementary School. And this is the microphone system that the teacher wears with a lanyard around their neck and it comes out with speakers in the ceiling. So we've already done training at Colin Ferry for that, and we're working on uh, scheduling the training for the other two <coughs> schools because that was completed prior to spring break. High Shoals, we're in the middle of installing that there. It's a little bit different system because the intercom is part of that project there, but we did all the network cabling over spring break, so we hope to get that to our teachers by May so they have access before the summer lets in. And then the second item of information is an update on our Chromebooks. So the board voted for uh, 3,799 Chromebooks in January, and those have all been delivered. And we are handing those out to our elementary schools this week and our secondary schools starting next week. That way everybody has a new device uh, to be able to uh, take the milestones test on if their device is eligible. And that's part of our device replacement cycle which is at five years. So once that student has had that device for five years, or it has achieved five years of life inside of Oconee County, that's when we replace it. And that concludes the technology report, unless there's any questions. Any questions? All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much. All right, next we'll hear from Human Resources, Dr. Horst Whitmire. Thank you, Ms. Ferris, for meeting the board members. And Dr. Branch, Human Resources has two very brief items of information for you this evening. The first has to do with our CPI report, short for Certified and Classified Personnel Information Report. Board members will recall that this is the report that is submitted to the state actually three times a year, and it's the, port of, the report upon which our training and experience funding for teachers certified staff is based each year, generates a significant amount of funding every year. The main report happens in October. There is a second report in March, and wanted to let you know that that was completed and signed off on last month as scheduled. Second item of information, one that I'm always excited to bring before you, is that last month, since we last had our, our March work session, back the day after the March work session, staffing allotments were issued to all of our schools. And as you know, this is a process that takes place really the same time every year. This year was a little bit different in that prior to this process, as you well know, we had an extensive redistricting 
uh, process for Dove Creek Middle School that included some staffing redistricting. We issued allotments to our schools last month, and I'm very, very pleased to tell you that hiring season is off to a fast and very positive start. Our principals and HR team have been hard at work over the last month and even before then in order to begin this process. Always want to stop here and say thank you to the Board of Education for your unwavering support of what we do with hiring for our students. You allow us aggressively to get out in the marketplace early on, even before, as you well know, the budget process is ongoing, but even before the budget is finalized. And that gives us the opportunity to go and get the best available teachers for our students. That happens year in and year out. And I'm very pleased to tell you that we're off to a great start, and as you'll see tonight on the personnel recommendations that come your way, a lot of good folks coming our way, and we're excited. And that concludes uh, those information items, unless there are any questions. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next we'll hear the Associate Superintendent's report, Student Services, Dr. Dallas Lede. Good evening, everybody. Before I jump into the Student Services report, I would like to introduce our new transportation director. Her name is Dr. Heather Shelton. She's in the back of the room there. <laughs> Dr. Shelton's first official day with us was March 27th, and she's been doing a great job, so uh, quite nicely. We're excited to have her. The uh, student services report contains three items of information and two action items for the April 17th Board of Education meeting. The first item of information is our school nutrition participation. I'm happy to report that when compared to the 18-19 school year, our breakfast participation is up 2.36% and our lunch participation is up just under 1%. The second item of information is our summer youth athletic camps. As you all are aware, every summer our school athletic staffs put on camps for the youth in our community to get out and learn a little bit about their sport. So they are offering 22 different athletic camps at uh, both of our high schools over the summer uh, to, to provide a space for kids to go and learn about the sports that they're interested in. The third item of information is a school safety update. I uh, wanted to update the board on some of the services that are provided to our school system by our sheriff's office. Um, I'm sure you are aware of this, but in the evening, our, the sheriff's deputies check our schools and make sure that the campuses are secure. They also uh, help provide security at our ball games and special events. Um, the school system assumes the cost of uh, all of the resources for both of those activities. Um, they also provide traffic direction at our schools in the morning and the afternoon. Historically, uh, that cost has been assumed by the Oconee County Commission's Office. As you all are aware, um, that is a service provided directly to the school system, and we believe that that should be assumed by the school system. So you'll see a request in the upcoming budget as we work through the budget cycle for the school system to assume the cost of those deputies and also raise their uh, rate of pay from $25 an hour to $35 an hour um, at those school crossings. I'd like to thank the Board of Commission for providing that service for a number of years for the school system. I'd also like to thank the Board of Education for the work that they've done to get us to this point and, and ensure that our students and faculty remain safe each and every day. The first action item is a field trip. Oconee County High School Baseball would like to travel to Auburn on June 27th and turn on June 30th of 2023 for baseball camp. The second item of information is a North Oconee field trip, and the golf team would like to go to Frisco, Texas. We want to July 9th of 2023 and return on the 12th. Superintendent's recommendation is to approve both trips as presented. That concludes my report. Mr. Thanks for the update on the security things, Dallas. I mean, it seems like a week doesn't go by when attention is not paid to safety in our school system. And, uh, hearing you give frequent updates on all the activities that, that you and your staff and all of our staff in the school system, especially in coordination and cooperation with our sheriff's office, should give everybody a, 
a, a good feeling that, uh, that there's a lot of attention being paid to this, and especially the, the comments you just made about uh, a, a new arrangement with the Sheriff's Office uh, with uh, their help with traffic control in front of our schools. It's been, a, it's been an issue that we've, that we've uh, talked about many, many times, and I think you're right. I think it's, it's more than time for us to uh, take on that responsibility and develop a relationship and continue to refine the relationship that obviously you have uh, with the Sheriff's Office and, and not only that component of school safety but all of them. So I appreciate you continuing to bring that forward to us to just remind everybody more than anything else. We may not be thinking about it every day, but there are a lot of people in the school system <coughs> that think about it every day, day after day, uh, and doing what it takes to make sure that our schools are safe and coordination with the Sheriff's Office. It's, it's greatly appreciated. Thank you. One thing I neglected to mention is we are working on uh, drafting a MOU, memorandum of understanding between the school system and the sheriff's office to provide that traffic direction. So once we get that drafted in the, the place we need it to be, we would bring it to the board to execute <coughs> and uh, bring it to the sheriff's office to execute as well. Well, given, given the comments that the sheriff has actually made in this room about his, his not only support but willingness to participate in that and do everything that's required, I'm sure that would be an easy around to uh, Yes, sir. Uh, I also want to say thank you um, to each of you and then your teams. I know I've received several calls over the last couple of weeks, um, and I know um, each of you and then your staff and also the sheriff's office has spent significant time talking with parents um, about what all we do and what all the sheriff's office does to protect our students. Um, I just want to say thank you for your time. Um, some of those were individual meetings as well as with the sheriff's office. So thank you. I'll ask Mr. Rickinson to come up and give us the information. Good evening. The Oconee County Schools Operations Division April Board of Education report contains four items of information and one action item for the April 17th Board of Education meeting. Our first item of information is the energy report. It's been updated to reflect our February data. The second of item of information is our lead custodian meeting. The March lead custodian meeting was held on Thursday, March 9th, and was hosted by the team at Oconee County Middle School. <coughs> Mr. Kent Wilson, the lead custodian at Oconee Middle School, presented on the best tips to remove gum from carpets. And our car custodial teams are to be commended for their rigorous work ensuring that our schools are to be clean for health. Our third item of information is our construction update. Uh, and uh, the list continues to grow, so it's going to take a minute. Uh, first is uh, Dove Creek Middle School. We continue to make great <coughs> progress out there, and I believe we have a video for everybody to enjoy. Uh, Tony McCullers is a, um, uh, a uh, part-time drone pilot. <laughs> <laughs> and from time to time, he'll fly and take some good pictures for us, and this time he did a video that I thought I'll be worth for us here. thing that made my day is they started the landscaping out there, they already got the trees in the ground. A lot of times on school projects the trees don't make it in the ground until July and they die immediately. Uh, so these trees have a, have a, a, a chance of living. Uh, the football fields are in grass. Uh, this past week the, uh, the football uh, field allotted was installed. Um, as you can see, the, uh, as of today the brickwork in the back of the building is done. This the video is actually two weeks old, so it's been a great deal of progress since then. Um, their, their big goal for this week is to start buttoning up and clean up all the mud in the back of the road in. Next year, doors are going onto the building now, windows are going in. Is that my Katie on the roof, Fred? <laughs> <laughs> it might be. It might be. I think it's already been signed a marker that Mike was here. <laughs> <laughs> 
So as you can see, it's quite a facility. Uh, I will assure you that everybody out there knows when school starts very thoroughly, and we will be ready. Uh, the next project we're going to talk about is Oconee Primary, uh, Oconee Elementary, Oconee High School Phase Two modifications. Uh, again, uh, we did a little bit of work over spring break with uh, dealing with HVAC controls in the elementary school, and uh, but for the most part, for the past six months or so, we've been gearing up, getting materials on hand, getting ready to hit the ground, rolling on, running on March on May 22nd. Next is the Instructional Support Center. They did break ground last week. They started clearing and grubbing. Uh, they got their um, erosion control measures in place, and uh, here we go. And, uh, and they know when the deadline is, too. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, Malcolm Bridge Elementary School, they broke ground out there this past week as well. Uh, started, they've done their clearing and grubbing, got erosion control in, and have already started building the, uh, the path for the building. So uh, we're moving along quickly out there. Uh, moving on to item four, uh, transportation update. Uh, the transportation department coordinated the following field trips over the last month. There's a total of 101 field trips, uh, 117 athletic trips, uh, 44 special education trips, which included 263 buses deployed 16,247 miles. Lastly, we've got one action item for the, uh, for the Board of Education meeting on the 17th. And that is the super, that's for the Oconee County, Oconee County Middle School Fieldhouse re-roofing project. Uh, it's the superintendent's recommendation that for the board to approve CGS waterproofing for the Oconee <coughs> County, Oconee County Middle School Fieldhouse re-roofing project for a proposed cost of $129,700. This project will be funded with general fund and ELOS dollars. And that concludes my report. Unless there are any questions. Very okay. Thank you. All right. Next is communications. Stephen Colquitt. Good evening, board members. Dr. Branch. Uh, the communications report has uh, three items of information for you tonight. Uh, first is our monthly highlights video of the uh, 11 schools and the district. And if you'll mute your mics, Paul will play the video. Thank you for your support of that. 
Uh, and then finally, our uh, last information item, of course, as we saw, the, uh, the Dove Creek Middle School mascot and logo. Uh, they have been announced, and uh, to, uh, uh, to a lot of excitement. Uh, I thank Mr. Eddy for letting me be there when the seventh graders, rising uh, eighth graders, were, were shown uh, the logo and the, and the uh, mascot on the first day. And, and seeing their reaction uh, meant a lot to me to be part of that. So, um, as you can see, we have the uh, the, uh, the knight's face, uh, this is, uh, whoop, that's fine right there. Uh, the, the D was very important to us because of the complex uh, with uh, Duff Creek Elementary School. So we kept the D as part of a logo uh, with the knight's uh, uh, word, wording. We, uh, so scroll down please. Uh, we've got the knight's uh, helmet face there, which will be kind of our tertiary uh, logo. And we're, we're folding it into several different places. Uh, the, the oval, which will be, uh, as you see there on the bottom right, uh, and then uh, up top again uh, with the uh, with the new font lettering. So uh, Mr. Eddie and his staff will have a lot of different opportunities to promote uh, the Duff Creek Knights. And that concludes communications. Unless you have any questions for me, thank you. The board will adjourn to executive session to discuss and deliberate upon personal matters as described on the affidavit to be attached to the minutes. Thank you, Mr. Burgess. Second. 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 Mr. Ransom, all in favor? Passes 4 to 0. Okay, we'll take a few minutes to clear the room, board members.